morning. Welcome to Calvary Grace Online. We invite you to worship with us this morning. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 One thing remains is his love for us. Amen. Amen. Praise him. Put your hands together where you are. Give him praise this morning. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you. 
It's amazing, but in the most difficult of times, we see the goodness of God shine brighter than ever before, and uh, that's the way it is today. I love the power verse that our Revive Kids shared, our worship team shared it, and uh, it's from 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8, and God will generously provide all that you need. I believe He will do that today. We're going to pray for the global prayer movement week seven in a moment, but first of all, I want to pray for your needs at home. I can't anoint you with oil here physically, but I have the anointing oil. I'm going to put a little on my finger and just sort of reach it out toward that camera and believe as I pray for you. If you have a need at home today, would you just, if, if it's a physical need, you may want to lay your hand somewhere on your shoulder or wherever, on your, your leg or whatever. And if there's a financial need, just believe God to provide for that for you, whatever that need is. Maybe you're going through some depression and anxiety, just frustration over, you know, when is all this stuff going to end and everything has changed so much and what in the world is going on and your mind can literally be filled with so many questions. But I believe the peace of God that surpasses all understanding can guard your heart and your mind today in Christ Jesus. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. We thank you for how good you are to us. Your goodness just radiates. It just shines. You change not. And because of your goodness, Lord, you care for your people and you love them. You care for what they're dealing with and going through today and just the multiplicity of different things that they're dealing with and perhaps praying for. Some of them may just feel like they're caught up in a just a wave of emotion to the degree that they can't think clearly and they don't know what to do or how to act or they find themselves reacting to anything and everything, maybe in ways they don't want to. Today, I am believing you to give them just strength in their life to be able not just to cope, not just to deal with what they're going through, but to be able to rise above it and continue to be the people of God that you've called all of us to be. I believe that in the wonderful, wonderful name of Jesus today. Chapter 3, verse 1 through 10 reads this way. And the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord unto Eli. And in those days the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. In other words, God had not shared his design or instruction with the nation of Israel hardly at all. 
And it says, One night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak he could barely see, was lying down in his usual bed or place, and the lamp of God had not yet gone out, which means that it was almost dawn, but it wasn't quite, so that light in the holy place burned all night long. At day, daybreak, that lamp would go out and they would put it out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he, he went and, and lay down. And again, the second time, the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli, said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And so Eli, as the high priest, was the only one that the word of God had been revealed to. And a third time, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. And then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. I wonder what that was like when all of a sudden he realized, you know, I haven't heard from God for a while. And Eli probably knew why he hadn't heard from God for a while, but now he's understanding the boy has heard from God. And so, he, so Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood there. That's an interesting fact. The Lord came and stood there. This was the incarnate Jesus before Bethlehem, for sure. We're talking about Old Testament. And he stood there and called as, called as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. In other words, this little boy was praying a dangerous prayer here. And we find out the Lord said, or Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. What a dangerous prayer that he prayed. I think it's incredibly cool that God is speaking to Samuel at this moment, right here in the temple, a little fourth grader or a fifth grader. God is speaking directly to him. But what he said to Samuel was not an easy message whatsoever, and it wasn't some pleasant to hear. And before I tell you what God spoke to Samuel, I wonder if we could do just a little bit of Bible trivia right here this morning. How many times in the Bible did God speak and give an assignment to somebody, and that assignment was easy to fulfill? If you'll do a study of God's Word, you'll find that, that every single time, God gave anyone an assignment. The assignment was never easy to fulfill. It was always difficult and hard. Sometimes I think we think in serving God, well, if I've got everything right with God, then serving God should be easy. I want you to know the more you serve Him, the harder it's going to be at times. We find that in God's Word. Remember when Noah heard from God, what did God tell him to do? Go out and build a little rowboat? Oh, no. Go out and build an ark in a country and a land where it had never rained before. So people laughed him to scorn and build it the size of one and a half football fields large. And then on top of that, I want you to go out and call two of each animal, both one male and one female, and fill that ark with all of these animals. That assignment was not easy. And then he told Jonah the same thing. Go and preach to the most wicked city on the planet, it was Nineveh, and Jonah didn't want to go. He got in a boat and went the opposite direction. We all know the story of the big fish and how God intervened and changed his plans. And just remember in the New Testament, Mary, when the angel said, you're going to be with child, she said, how in the world is that going to be since I'm a virgin? But the Holy Spirit came on her, and then he added to that, and your son or that child is going to be the son of God that you're going to carry Every time God would speak to somebody throughout his word, the assignment was never, ever easy. It was always challenging and difficult. And if you have the faith, the courage to pray that kind of prayer that Samuel prayed, Lord, speak to me. What do you want me to do with my life? What do you want me to do today, every single day with my life? Then it will always be something that will stretch you. It will be something that will teach you. You'll have to learn to depend on Him. When God spoke to that 12-year-old boy in 1 Samuel chapter 3, 
God didn't say, I want you to share with Eli and the rest of the nation of Israel that I'm going to pour out my blessings on all of them. That's not what God said. He didn't say you're going to marry that cute girl in your fifth grade classroom. That's not what God told Samuel. He didn't say you're going to grow up and, uh, uh, and make six figures and be a YouTube influencer. That's not what he told him at all. This is what he said in 1 Samuel 3 and verse 11. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. Now, we love things that tingle, but in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word for tingle meant God is going to judge Israel, and so it's going to, they're going to hear this judgment of God that you're going to pronounce. He went on to say in verse 12, At that time I will carry out against Eli, and that was the high priest, Everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. As the dad of the home, he allowed his sons to live in the temple and to continue to sin and do wrong. And he says he knew about it. His sons blasphemed God and he failed to restrain them. Therefore I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned by sacrifice or offering. He says, Samuel lay down until morning, and then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and he was afraid to tell Eli the vision. I think if I was a 12-year-old boy working with Eli, I'd be afraid to tell Eli what God had told me he was going to do to his family as well. And it goes on to say, But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, Here I am. He said, What was it he said to you? And Eli said, Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. Verse 19, The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up. He let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. In other words, everything that Samuel prophesied came to pass. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognizes Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. So the Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. I don't know about you, but that was a heavy burden for a 12-year-old boy to have to carry. But God says, this is what I want you to do. And let me say it this way. Don't pray this kind of prayer. It's a dangerous prayer. Lord, speak to me. Don't pray that prayer unless you really want to hear what God has to say into your life. You'd be better off not praying that prayer. But I can tell you one thing. If you don't pray that prayer, you will never see God's plan for your life. Lord, speak to me about my life. Give me the direction I should go both today. Sometimes I think we think God's direction is sometime in the future. God's direction for every one of our lives starts today. The Bible says, help me out, this is the day the Lord hath made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. God's got a plan and a purpose for me today, not just next week or next year or 10 or 12 years from now, but today. Prayer is not just talking, but prayer is listening to God. God is always speaking. I think the question is, are we listening? God is always speaking to us. The question is, are we listening? Samuel listened to God. He heard what God had to say. And, and so when we say, okay, I want to hear God's voice. I want to know what he wants for my life. I don't want to just have to go through life wondering, am I doing the right thing with my life? Or am I living a life with other people, sharing with them, building them up, encouraging them rightly? Am I doing it the way God wants me? So how do I hear God's voice? How do I do it? I'm going to give you some primary ways that you probably already know. You'll see them as an insert in your bulletin today. How do I hear God's voice? Number one, we need to be still. The number one way to hear God speak to you is simply learning how to be still. And that flies and it's against all the... 46... ...experience... ...say... It doesn't say, be frantic and you will know that I am God. It doesn't say, the busier you are, then you will know that I am God. It doesn't say, seek me on the go as you go about your daily plans. Just throw out a prayer here and a prayer there, and you will know that I am God. Here's what Psalm 46.10 says, 
Be still. Say that with me. Be still and know that I am God. Take some time in the presence of God to know what God wants for you so that He can speak to your life. And, you know, when is the last time maybe that you took your phone or tablet and you took an hour and you just scrolled through social media, Facebook, whatever, and just looked at everything, the pictures and what people that you know are doing, you just took an hour to do that. Or maybe you took an hour to work out or an hour to play games. Or you just took another hour that devoted it to reading a book or doing something else that you enjoy. Let me throw out this question. When was the last time you took an hour to just be still before God and, and let Him know that you recognized Him as the central force in your life. That is a tough thing for human beings to do. Number one, the enemy of your soul doesn't want to do that, you doing that. So as soon as you find a quiet place to get before God and spend some time before Him, the enemy of your soul is going to flood your mind with all kinds of things that you need to get up and start doing. Well, you need, you need to do this, you need to do that, you forgot to do this, you need to go write this down. He's going to flood your mind. Be still and know that He is God just some time in His presence. In fact, Jesus said this about prayer. When you pray, don't be like the Pharisees who pray quick prayers or pray in public so that other people will hear them pray. Here's what Jesus said about prayer. He says, find a prayer closet. That's what He said. And what you pray in private, God will reward you openly. So what He says is, we need to find a place. It may or may not be your walk-in closet, but it could be your bedroom, your living room, somewhere quiet, away from the social media, away from the TV, away from other people, the kids may be in bed, whatever, but it's just you and God alone, and you're taking time to be still and know that He is God. That is a... challenge myself today. I need to learn the discipline and the practice of finding a place. I know I talk to Ron sometimes. I used to do this when I was I just enjoyed getting out in the woods, just me and God, and taking a walk. Or, you know, the, the fish weren't biting, but I, at least I was talking to God. And be still and know that I am God. Spending some time with the Lord, that is one thing that He can do. It's a dangerous prayer. And so people will say, you know something, am I going to, if I pray that prayer, speak to me. Am I going to hear the audible voice of God? Let me just say it this way. Probably not. You might, but probably not. I never have heard the audible voice of God. But I promise you that God speaks to me in all different kind of ways, just like He speaks to you in all different kind of ways. Here's a couple of ways that God speaks to us. The number one way is this book right here. He speaks to us through the Bible. That's the number one way that God will speak to you. It's a living word. It's active. It'll speak to you. It will convict you. It will correct you. It will encourage you. It will build your faith. And if you're, if you're not reading this book in a private time alone with God, it is no wonder God will never, ever speak to you. I want to say that again. This is the primary way. You can never discard it. And if you and I aren't reading this regularly, there is no way that God can ever, ever speak to you. This is a primary way. He will always use it. It says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will what? Never pass away. It is the authority of God, these 66 books. It's the reason we to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, but doing what? rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to be people of the word. Can I have an amen? And so you say, I wish God would speak to me. I need some direction in my life. But if you're not studying this book on your own, in the privacy of your home or wherever, listening, reading, studying God's word, there's no way God can ever speak to you. And you can go up for a hundred prayer times and have evangelists anoint you with oil, and I want people to speak into my life. You're trying to short-circuit the plan of God, and how many of you know that will never, ever work? We've got to have the primary reason in our life. And if you're studying and reading God's Word, He will speak to you. He will speak to you. He will always use His Word. There's a second area, and that is God speaks to people through messages, through a song, 
through a friend. God will speak to you in so many different ways. I can't tell you how many times God has used my, uh, speaks to me through my wife. And you know, sometimes that's annoying. Can I have an amen? That she, God uses her to speak to me and challenge me in different areas of my life. You know, I'll be having a freak out moment. I mean, I'll be worried over something and it's just about to drive me crazy. And all of a sudden she's sitting over there and she's saying things like, you know, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. And and uh, I'm saying, where did you get that at that moment? You're over there uh, thumbing through your phone. She said, I saw it on Facebook. I said, who, who posted that? She said, you posted that earlier this morning. You're the one that posted that. Don't you hate it when God uses your wife to speak to you and challenge you like that? But God will. He speaks to you through people. Can I have an amen? He'll use people to speak into your life. And then he speaks through circumstances like, you may say, there's no way I can ever do that. But God will open a door, and it's amazing how that will happen in your life. And then there are other times that God will close the door. You know, sometimes we need to be thankful that God closed some doors in the past in our life, and somebody else walked through that door instead of you and me, because we'd be in trouble if we had walked through that door. But at the time, we wanted to walk through that door mighty bad and mighty hard. We thought we knew what was best for our life. Aren't you glad God knows what's best for our life? And sometimes he closes doors and you can't get that thing open to save your life. And then later on you'll say, Lord, I certainly am glad that door never opened for me. It was an amazing thing. God opens doors. He closes doors. He uses circumstances in our life. And then fourth and last, God speaks through his spirit. As a Christian, the Bible says God's spirit lives within you. And as God's Spirit lives within you, His Holy Spirit can give you promptings and directions in your life. You may wonder, how do I know if it's God giving me promptings? Listen, the devil will never ask you to bless somebody else. So you know that if God is speaking to you, if He's saying you need to give to somebody, you need to help somebody, you need to bless somebody, you already know that is God. And the way you know it's God, because we're back at number one, you've been reading this word right here, and the Holy Spirit is just speaking to you, which you've already, uh, am I, are you hearing me today? Already reading and seeing in God's word. We understand it. It's a supplement, so to speak. God speaks through His Spirit. And the more you listen to God, the easier it is to hear His voice. The more you listen to Him. Be still and know that I am God. Find a place alone with God. God never meant for you and me to go through life just figuring it out all by ourselves. It's too complicated to do that. Things change too radically. They, they happen. You can go to work one day and be fired. You never saw it coming. You can, things happen on the job and in marriages and in families and health-wise. You go to a doc and, and he tells you news that you never existed and about blows you away. But guess what? God knows your whole life every single day of your life and when you're in harmony with him when you are listening to him when you say Lord speak to me today because I am listening to you God will prepare you and you will not be totally blown away you may be discouraged it may hurt for a little while but you know what your response is going to be God already knew that I was going to face this before I went to work Monday morning he knew the doc what the doctor was going to tell me he knew what my spouse was going to say. He knew what was going to happen to my child. And they would, might get sick. He knew all about that. And he prepared me. But you're going to be totally unprepared for that. Even as a Christian, you say, I can't believe God did that to me. God didn't want you to be totally unprepared. He gave you His Word. He allowed you to go to church to hear other people speak. I feel like I'm preaching to myself. Can I have an amen? He allows other people to speak into your life as well. And we need to hear from God. That's what Samuel said. He said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I want to hear what you have to say. If you really want to pray a dangerous prayer, pray that prayer. Speak to me, Lord. I want to hear what you have to say. And then be prepared to absorb what, what he is speaking into your life. God speaks in all different kind of ways. The second way is be willing. Whatever God speaks to you, Ahead of time, say, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever you speak to me. It may not be what I like, but I'm going to obey you. I'm going to do what you call me to do. And I think oftentimes our prayers are really, once again, safe prayers. They, you know, we want God to do everything. Keep me safe. Heal my headache. 
uh, take my boss away who gives me a headache every time I go in on Monday, you know, do something. Uh, they're all safe prayers that have us as a central focus, my betterment in life. And what if instead of going before God with our list of demands and, and things we want Him to do, we went before God with a blank sheet and said, Today, Lord, whatever you want in my life, whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm praying for healing, but if it's not your plan, I want to live for you and serve you. The Apostle Paul had a thorn in his flesh. It was a messenger of Satan that buffeted him everywhere he went. And he prayed three times in a very strong way, take this out of my life. I can be more efficient. I can't handle it. I don't like it. And God says, nope, I'm going to let it stay in your life. My grace is sufficient for everything you go through. If it was for Paul that way, it's for you and me as well. That the prayers may not be, God help me, God take me, God change me, God work things out better. It may be the more I pray and the more I try to hear from Him and His Word, that His grace, we sang about it this morning, is going to be like a wave that's going to come over your life. And it's going to totally wash out all of the uh, pre-existing negatives. Can I have an amen? It's just going to work in those areas of your life. It's the way that God speaks. And I think this is so important. And that is when sometimes we will say, God, I wish you would speak to me and give me some direction. Listen, if you prayed that prayer before, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, last month, and God gave you some direction and you didn't obey God, guess what? God's not going to give you any more direction for today until you do what? Until you go back and obey and do what He first asked you to do. It's the way that God always works in our life. We've got to obey First, what he did before he'll give us something new to obey. And sometimes we always, Lord, I didn't like what you directed me last week. I need something new from you. No, God says you obey that and then I'll give you something else and something new to follow through with. Proverbs 3, 6 says it this way. It says, seek his will in all you do and he may show you. Is that what the, is that what the scripture says? He may show you? He will show you which path to take. He's going to give you. It's a promise from God, not a maybe. It's a promise from God if you do what? If you seek His will in all you do. Seeking through prayer. Seeking through His Word. Seeking through people. Seeking in every single avenue. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. And third and last, we've got to be ready to obey when He, uh, he gives us some direction in life. Be ready because when God speaks to you, Make sure you're ready to do what he says. And I think about Samuel, a little boy, working for Eli. And certainly he wants to honor the priest, the man of God. And God says to him, this priest is not honoring me, so I'm trusting you as a little boy who will listen to me. Listen, sin in Eli and Eli's family had blocked God from being able to speak to him. And so God had to speak to a 12-year-old boy to get the message through to the man of God. I want you to know that's a sad day when the people of God can no longer hear from God because of stuff. And aren't you glad for the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, that He can forgive us and restore us so that all of us can once again come boldly to the throne of grace and receive help in an hour. I don't know about you, but that gets me excited. I don't have to go find a 12-year-old boy to speak to me. God can speak to me as I ask God for forgiveness and cleansing in my own life. But when you pray, it's a dangerous prayer. A dangerous prayer, speak, Lord, I am listening to you. And you have to remember, God never gave an assignment to anybody in Scripture that wasn't challenging in your life. And if your prayer life, if my prayer life is all about, God, I just wish you'd work this out for my family. I just wish that you'd... Uh, uh, just take away these health problems. Nothing wrong with praying those prayers, but if those are all you're praying about your family being good, working everything out so that you're nice and comfortable, I don't know about you, I don't read about a comfortable God in this book. I read about a challenging God in this book. Somebody's challenging. And you're probably spinning your wheels a lot in those prayers, never getting anywhere, and very, very frustrated that God is not answering prayer. Once again, we've got to bring a blank paper before God. And, and just like Jesus in the garden, do you think Jesus wanted to go to the cross and be nailed there? What did he pray in the garden? Not my will, but yours. Be, if it's possible, take this cup away from me, but not my will. Your will be done. We've got to do that with every prayer. Lord, I want this job. Lord, I want to do this. I want this and that and the other, but 
Those are just the things I want. Those are the things that are not important to you, perhaps. Not my will, but yours be done in my life. A believer will never be happy unless they're in the will and plan of God. And they have to submit your own desires and plans to God in order to see that happen and, and turn into fruitation in your life. Certainly God may speak to you and he may reveal things to you. But, he, you know, when he does that, you say, here's my sinfulness, here's my wrong before you. I ask you to forgive me. And God may spur you to do some things that you don't feel qualified for. You know, God may be leading you to, uh, to lead a life group in your local church or in this church. He may be leading you to do that. Maybe he's leading you to pray out loud. And some people said, oh, no, I can never pray out loud in church or in my small group. That's not what I want to do. God may be working in your life, may spark you to go back to school or change careers or move to a different state. He may be reaching out uh, to you to talk to your boss and invite your boss to church and, 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 uh, and, and allow him to uh, uh, share salvation with him as well or to be bold or forgive somebody. It's a dangerous prayer when you pray, Lord, I'm your servant and I'm listening to you. And when I listen to you, I want direction from you and I promise you that I'm going to obey you in every single thing that I hear from you. It is a desire from my heart. Let me finish this way. Last week I invited you to, uh, to take the week and join me in making some bold prayers. And we did that. A number of you I've been talking to this week, you've been doing that. This week I want to challenge you to step out with courage and faith and just uh, uh, stop before you start today, the day, like tomorrow morning, and just say, Lord, speak to me today. What do you want me to do today? Because we, usually when we wake up, we've already... In our mind, we have in focus what we're going to do. Well, I'm going to get up and brush my teeth and get ready, and then I'm going to head out to work and drive and, and do my job and come home, and we already have our day all planned. Do you know that in everything that we have planned, God has some ways that he has ordained in those days, in that day. And he wants you to be, he wants us to pray a dangerous prayer. Lord, speak to me during the course of this day. I want to follow after you. And it's amazing when we are, when we're serious about that kind of prayer, dangerous prayer, God will speak to you during the course of the day. Maybe as soon as you get to work, the Holy Spirit will just prompt you, just speak to you about doing something. You know something? So-and-so over there is going through a tough time, and you need to pray with them or say, look, I'm, I'm here for you if you ever need somebody to talk to, whatever it is, just relationship building with those people. And, um, and when he does, you'll be, you'll be like, uh, well, Lord, I want you to speak to me, and if you're speaking to me, I need more detail. Uh, don't ask for more detail. Just obey what God wants you to do. He's not going to give you all the details of what he wants you to do. He's going to say, no, just take this first step and start. Just like Jonah, I want you to get on a boat and go to Nineveh. And Jonah probably said, well, when I get there, what's going to happen? And God didn't tell him that. You just get in the boat and go. And that's the way that he works in our life. You see, the only thing more dangerous than praying this prayer is not praying this prayer. Because you'll never know what God's plan is for your life. And sometimes Christians are, well, I'm happy in my Christian life. I know I'm going to heaven when I die. Or Jesus comes back in the rapture. Or, uh, you know, everything's going okay. The Christian life should be more than okay. When I read about the Christians in the New Testament, their lives day by day, they, they never knew what they were going to encounter. And God was always around the next corner with an opportunity and, uh, and something for them to be involved in. It was an exciting life every single day. It should be the same way for us. It's a dangerous prayer, but it's the one that you want to pray, Lord, speak. Your servant is listening. Lord, speak to me.
I worship you. I worship you. 